Believers can never be defeated if they stand on the word of God faithfully and fight with strategic wisdom and knowledge. Offensive capability plus defensive ability guarantees victory over the enemy. The Bible tells me in the book of 1 Timothy 6.12, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. The reason some people are not having victory, some believers are not having the desired victory is because they're not fighting the right fight. God didn't say you should fight through tweets, mean tweets. That's not how you fight. You don't fight by posting some ugly things on, on social media. That's not how you fight. You don't fight by pointing fingers and saying, that must be the devil. That's not how you fight. The devil is not among your believers. The devil is not among your sisters and brothers in the household of faith. The devil is an invisible spirit. He uses men. We are not called to fight men. We are called to address and rebuke the spirit they carry. When Jesus said, Satan, get behind me, he was not referring to Peter. He was referring to the influence behind the actions of Peter. Rise up! And stop being childish. That man over there who does foolish things is not a problem. The sister who gossips all the time is not a problem. It is a power behind them. So when you send a mean tweet, you say ugly things about them on Facebook, the devil laughs because he dodges your bullet. That's not how you fight the devil. That's what he wants. That's why Christians are busy fighting themselves. In the Philippines, look at the nonsense. From one Christian leader, this one is fighting this. This one, I was talking to Bishop Cardin the other day. I said, Bishop Cardin, how do you think revival is going to take place in the Philippines? By all of us carrying different banners. That's not how the revival takes place. Revival takes place when God people come together. If my people who are called by my name. Not carrying different, a house divided against itself. We not stand. You want to see revival? You must let go of your emotions. The purpose of God is much more greater than your emotions. You want to see revival in the house of God? Let go of your fragile ego. You don't want to attend the meeting because that sister didn't greet you. They didn't give you honorable titles. Sit down. That's not how you win. You want to see revival in the Republic of the Philippines? Let go of your self-entitlement mindset. You want to see revival in the Philippines? Take upon yourself the form of a servant. That's how revival takes place. Take up the garment of praise. Take up the garment of tolerance. Take up the garment of humility. Go to the place of prayer. It's not about gossip or, or sending things on Facebook or mean tweets or on Twitter or saying things that aren't right. It is going down on your knees and pulling down strongholds in prayer. That's how revival takes place. Fight the good fight of faith. Some of you are fighting court cases. I'm not saying it is wrong. When you've tried peace, it doesn't work. Go to the court. God fights for you. But this battle we're fighting, you cannot win it with your emotions. Nowadays, it's so difficult to talk to believers. You correct them, every one of them will tell you, Bishop, God told me. A is fighting B. Why aren't you reconciling? God told me that B is a demon. B is fighting C. Why aren't you guys reconciling? Is God an author of confusion? Look at your neighbor. Say, you are not my enemy. You're not my enemy. The devil is. He may use you from time to time, and I may rebuke that, but you're not my enemy. The devil is. Despite all the things we've gone through, the Bible tells me in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 37, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We ain't standing because we're righteous. We ain't standing because we've done everything right. 
The Bible tells us that we are more than conquerors in all these things because God loves us. I can stand on the promises of God because I know he loves me. You can stand on the promises of God because you know he loves you. The Bible tells me all things indefinitely we work out for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. So look at the perfect combination. He loves you and you love him. That means miracles are going to be endless. All things we innate in all this. We are more than conquerors. Your business may have been down, but in all these, you are more than a conqueror. Your home may have been wrecked, but in all these, you are coming out stronger, better, and more victorious. Your your home, your mind may have been messed up, traumatized by many things. But, but in all these things, you are not a victim. You are more than a conqueror. A conqueror is the one who fights the battle. But the one who receives the prize is more than the conqueror. Jesus fought the battle so that you can receive the prize. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made an open shore of them. And he gave us victory. And that victory is eternal. That victory is consistent because the fight of faith is a fight of victory. The fight of faith is a fight of revival. The fight of faith is a fight where God's people are taken from the realm of inconsequential things to the realm of glory. Fight. The good fight of faith. Don't fight foolishly. Fight with focus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. If you cannot have peace in Christ, you can never have peace anywhere. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Every battle you've ever fought or you intend to fight has been determined. My God says that you are more than a conqueror. Isaiah 54, 16 to 17. Behold, I have created a blacksmith who blows the coals in the fire, who brings forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the spoiler to destroy. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and the righteousness is from me, says the Lord. You're waiting for God to stop the battle. He said, every plan, everything that's risen against you, you shall condemn. Today, begin to speak into every negative situation in your life. Condemn the power of hunger. Condemn the power of sickness. Condemn the power of condemnation. Condemn everything that is not of God because that is the heritage of our believers. I'll show you three ways to overcome the enemy. There are many ways. There are many ways to overcome the enemy, but I'm just going to show you three ways. David took five stones to stop the, the giant. The first one is obedience to God. Obedience to God makes us victorious over the enemy, while disobedience creates discouragement, defeat, and destruction. Exodus chapter 23, verse 22. But if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I'll be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. So if you obey God, God says, I will be an enemy to your enemies. Sickness is an enemy. Poverty is an enemy. Coronavirus is an enemy. I declare from this moment that my God will become an enemy to all your enemies in the mighty name of Jesus. Every frustration, every incantation, everything that is not of God today, I bring an end to it in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Isaiah 1, 
19 to 20. If you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Say there is goodness in the land of the Philippines. Say there is goodness in the land. Do you know how to attain the goodness? You don't need a doctorate degree in economics. You don't need an MBA in management. Just be willing and be obedient. And the goodness of the land of the Republic of the Philippines and other nations of the world will come to you. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Two, engage in spiritual warfare. Although Satan uses people to afflict us, the real enemy is not men, but the demonic powers behind their actions. Therefore, we must learn to combat wickedness without seeking to destroy those bound by sin. Joel 3.9 Proclaim these among the nations. Prepare for war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Do we have mighty men of war in the Philippines? Where are the Davids? Where are the Elijahs? Where are the mighty men of battle? Arise and shine because God's glory is risen upon you. Isaiah 28 verse 18. Your covenant with death will be annulled. Tell your neighbor, say, you cannot die this year. I say, you cannot die this year. You cannot die of disease. Why? Because your covenant with death has been canceled. I speak this Lord's day to every one of you under the influence. Those bound to die before their time, I declare that in place of death, you shall have life. Your business shall not die. Your relatives shall not die. Your children shall not die. Your health will not die. Arise and shine, for God's glory is risen upon you. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Your dreams will not die. Everything that God has spoken to you will come to pass. Your covenant with death will be annulled. And your agreement with Joel will not stand. When the overflowing scourges passes through, then you will be trampled down by it. When the scourge passes through, because you have life, you will not be carried away in the mighty name of Jesus. Today I declare every one of you immune to sickness, to cancer, to coronavirus. Receive life. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Ephesians 6, 10 to 12. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Romans 13, 12. The night is first spent. The days at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. We have spent too much time doing foolish things. We spend too much time making mistakes, fighting over inconsequential things. The time is far spent. Put on the whole armor of light. Today, I declare by the mystery of the apostolic and the prophetic, receive, may your armor of light be ignited right now in the name of Jesus. Every darkness surrounding your life has been annulled in the mighty name of Jesus. Finally, rejoice over the desired victory. There is no joy in the camp of the wicked and defeated people. Only the tears of anger and pain. Since we know that our victory over the enemy is assured in Christ Jesus, we must learn to be joyful with a heart of gratitude towards God. When you see Christians who are always sad and complaining, that's not victory. 
a victorious people, when you go to the camp, is always rejoicing and rejoicing and rejoicing. That's what Paul said. Rejoice again, I say, rejoice. We must learn from the Old Testament. God delivered a certain people. Pharaoh could not stop them. Diseases could not stop them. Hunger could not stop them. The Red Sea could not stop them. The desert could not stop them. But they were stopped by their own anger and complaining and complaining and complaining. Don't stop yourself from entering your promise. Labor through praise to enter that rest. Some of you, you complain too much. Oh, you won't come to church because I saw someone I didn't want to see. Oh, I saw something I didn't like. That's childish. Wake up. A soldier can't say, I ran away from the battle because the place is stinking. No. In a battle, you need to focus on the enemy. You focus to win. You don't win a battle by being distracted. Distracted by other people. You didn't come to see other people. You came to praise God. When you come to church, focus on the race. Focus on the enemy. Focus on your God. And you will run a good race and finish the race well. Sometimes the church of God, we talk too much. We talk too much. You don't win battles by talking. And in my silence, you want to drag me into your endless battles. I don't have battles with men. My battle is not with flesh and blood. My battle is with the enemy. Lawlessness. We keep you from coming to church. Some people say, but bishop, you're my bishop. Am I your bishop? Am I your pastor? Can I talk to you? Is there any advice I gave to you? When was the last time I rebuked you? I was telling someone, I said, how would you know that you're Bishop Tony's son or daughter? If he doesn't rebuke you, then you're not. Because a true mentor is going to rebuke you when you're doing the wrong things. But you say, I'm, I'm, but they cannot advise you. The moment they advise you, you say, Ediwa, I'm out. That's not how an army behaves. If they tell soldiers who are ready to win, if they say, sit down, you sit down. If they say stand up, you stand up. I declare by the Spirit of God that every one of you, the spirit of lawlessness has been erased from your destinies in the mighty name of Jesus. From now on, the spirit of discipline, the spirit of obedience, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge will be upon you. Say, I receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. James 1, 2. Brethren, Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Say, count it all joy. Because something good is going to come out of the whole thing. Matthew chapter 5 verse 12. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Romans 5.3 And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Do you glory in tribulation? Thank you for telling me the truth. Because you all were silent. But God says we should glory in tribulation. Only a madman glories in tribulation, but we ain't normal. Because we don't carry the spirit of the world. That is why when they beat Paul and Silas, they didn't complain. In that prison, they went into some dance and they were dancing and they were dancing and they were dancing and they were praising God and dancing. Then suddenly, suddenly, you, you can't be a Christian and be normal to the world. Because those days, as a university student, I'm going to school. And suddenly I drop from the bus, the, the campus bus, and I begin to dance, and I begin to dance, and I begin to dance. They said, this guy is crazy. I said, yes, I am not crazy. I am simply crazy. When you see what people don't see, they say you are abnormal. What do you see? Don't tell me you see the coronavirus. You ask me, what do I see? I see a great people. 
I see a glorious people. I see a prosperous people. I see a holy people. We shall overcome. Touch two, three people say, you may be stuck in this darkness, but you are coming out. We shall overcome. We are overcomers. We glory in tribulation. (laughs) Oh my. You want to know how we succeed in life? We glory in tribulation. The Bible tells me in the book of James 1, 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Do you want to be approved? Then glorify God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Then in conclusions, Romans 8, 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Tell your neighbor, say who? Say it with all the dignity. Say who can be against us? The Bible tells me, I am he that opens and no one can shut. Who can be against us? If God tells you that you're going to be promoted, who can be against you? If God tells you in two years you're going to build a mansion, who can stop it? If God tells you that I have given you life, I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly, who can stop it? Say who. Stand to your feet.